Our first speaker tonight it will be Bernard Salt. Bernard is a KPMG partner based in Melbourne and the author of a number of global studies such as Beyond the Baby Boomers and the Global Skills Convergence and Future Focus. He heads a group of consultants within KPMG providing demographic advice to business and government and has established a reputation as a trend forecaster for business and government. He's a best-selling author, uh, our twice-weekly columnist with the, news, uh, with the Australian newspaper, a regular on the Australian speaking circuit and a business advisor. His views are sought by business community and the media. He appears regu regularly on radio and televi television programs such as the 7.30 report, Sunrise, Today Tonight, Current Affair and 60 Minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our first speaker, Bernard Salt. Thanks, uh, thanks so much, Greg, for that introduction. Thank you also to the Centre for Independent Studies for the invitation to speak. Bernard Salt, I'm a partner with KPMG based in Melbourne. My uh, presentation today uh, deals with a topic that is politically incorrect. Uh, the existence of a middle class implies the existence of an upper class and a lower class, but we never use those terms. Uh, and in fact, uh, we're uh, more likely to use terms like battler class uh, than, uh, than lower class or working class these days. But our subject today is the existence of the Australian middle class and uh, whether it's disappearing. Uh, and I would like to start by defining what we mean by middle class. And I'm sure uh, there would be uh, a number of PhD topics uh, on the subject of defining the, uh, the middle class. I don't want to get too fancy about this. I think it can be relatively easily defined for the purposes of discussion. Uh, I think that the middle class in Australia, by definition, must exist between a number of tax brackets, between the $37,000 tax bracket and the $180,000 tax bracket in terms of income per, uh, per uh, annum. And the total number of Australians living in households where the household income falls between $37,000 a year on the second tax bracket and before the uppermost tax bracket is in fact, I think, around about 18 million. 17 or 18 million Australians uh, comprise the broad base of middle class Australia, middle Australia. Working families is another term that is often used to describe uh, middle Australia or the middle class. Uh, I've been completing an analysis of the 2011 census through my columns in the Australian newspaper every Thursday for the last 12 months. And it's given me a perspective on, uh, on Australia and Australians. And I will say that um, the perspective that's coming out of this is really quite confronting. I've worked on censuses right back to 1981. So the seven censuses that I've looked at, what I see coming out of Australia from the 2011 census is a nation and certainly cities that are rigidly divided, rigidly divided between the haves and the have-nots with middle Australia sitting squarely in the middle and perhaps being marginalised. And to illustrate this point, um, uh, I have done an analysis on the suburbs or the postcodes in Australia with the highest levels of unemployment at the time of the census. At that time, unemployment was around about 5%. Go to the Sydney suburb of Claymore, down near Campbelltown, and when the Australian average unemployment rate was 5%, in Claymore it was 30%. There were parts of Claymore where the unemployment rate was 40%. I didn't actually calculate what the youth unemployment rate would be in a place like that. In my view, if you look at real disadvantage, if you want to look at one extreme of the spectrum of the Australian population, then Claymore, certainly. Uh, is the best example of that. In Melbourne, the equivalent would be Dallas in the northern suburbs of Melbourne around Broadmeadows. Unemployment peaks at around about 27, 28%. In Brisbane, it's the suburb of Riverview. But equally, you could choose Inala or Kingston or Woodridge. In South Australia, it's the suburb of Davran Park, north of Elizabeth. If you want to see real disadvantage on the Australian continent in a metropolitan context, then go to these places. These are not middle class. However, even those places pale into insignificance in terms of disadvantage you will find across the Australian continent outside the capital cities. About 80 kilometres south of Cairns, there is an indigenous community called Yarrabah with about 2,500 people. At a time when the national unemployment rate was 5%, in Claymore it was 30%, in Dallas it was 25%, in Yarrabah 25%. 
it was 70%. There comes a point when you say it is not social disadvantage, it's actually dysfunction. The other measure that I looked at was the incident of uh, young girls, uh, 15 to 19, who have had a baby. This is actually measured by the census across the Australian continent and population. Less than 2% of females aged 15 to 19 have had a baby. But if you go to Claymore, that proportion is closer to 20%. If you go to a community called Wadi in the Northern Territory, it's closer to 30%. At one extreme, there are places of real social disadvantage on the Australian continent and the average community. The average Australian has no idea that these places exist. There are, of course, communities of extreme advantage uh, in Australia, and you'll find these typically in the inner city of Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane, uh, Adelaide, and to a lesser extent, Perth. These are places that are dominated by singles, couples, dinks, gays, expats, corporates, and assorted rich people, but not families. The demographics are settling, shifting, if it was like a centrifugal force, flinging out to middle and outer suburbia, the families of middle Australia. And in fact, um, I've written about the uh, central suburbs of Melbourne and Sydney in particular with the, um, uh, by nominating a new tribe that's emerged. Uh, and you can't be in the business of demography and not have the cool acronyms like yuppies and dinks. The latest uh, acronym to describe that inner city tribe is the PUMPKIN set, P-U-M-C-I-N-S, stands for the professional urban middle class in nice suburbs. And uh, you can tell if you come from a pumpkin household because there's goat's cheese in the fridge. I have this theory, I have this theory, and actually map, map this, that there is a thing known as the goat's cheese curtain. Uh, that sits around about seven kilometres out from the centre of Melbourne and Sydney, uh, CBD. And in uh, Sydney, it would be, say, Burwood or Strathfield would be just inside the Goat's Cheese Curtain. Silverwater and Firth West uh, would be uh, squarely in middle Australia, middle-class communities. Um, I actually see our cities dividing geographically. And you could argue that middle Australia sits in that broad base of middle suburbia. There's only about one million Australians living inside that goat's cheese curtain. I think there's around about three million people that would sit under the $37,000 per year, if you like, largely the indigenous community, around about 700,000 people, largely the unemployed community, about 500,000 people, largely the retired community, up to three million people, as well as the uh, genuinely disadvantaged, unskilled, low-skilled Australians. But in the middle, about 18 million people uh, that is um, comprising uh, Middle Australia. My view of uh, looking at Middle Australia through the census is that these are people that are living very ordinary, unglamorous lives. What I see in, in Australia, particularly over the last 10 years, where our culture has pursued exceptionalism, and that involves uh, almost the... Um, uh, the support of or the pursuit of celebrity and the support of minorities. But we're forgetting about middle Australia, forgetting about that silent majority, that dutiful component of Australians that go to work, PAYE taxpayers, that raise families, that have mortgages, that, that commute from uh, middle suburbia in places like Melbourne, Sydney and Brisbane. It is that community, the stability of that community that delivers this nation its prosperity and its stability. The welfare, well-being, the narrative of life in middle Australia, in middle suburbs, is actually what makes this country tick. Now, my concern is that there is a growing narrative of um, uh, concern about, or a backlash, if you like, against middle Australia. There's been some element there for maybe 20, 30 years or so where life in the burbs is regarded as unglamorous, a little unsophisticated, a little boring, if you like. Uh, more recently, there's been concerns about the term middle-class welfare. My view is that the middle class would regard any returning of uh, tax through benefits would really be viewed as, well, you're simply giving back taxes that you should never have taken in the first place. My view is that middle Australia, middle class, the middle class is actually... The, the, the basis to driving the Australian community makes everything tick, makes everything work. But this is not to say that there are not problems uh, 
uh, with the middle uh, of Australian society. And I think this is particularly coming through in the workplace um, and in our shift in employment since the global financial crisis. In the five years leading up to the global financial crisis, that is May 2003 through to May 2008, the number of jobs added to the Australian continent was 1.4 million. And we spread those 1.4 million jobs across 17 of the 19 sectors or industry that make up the Australian economy. You could be in retail, you could be in agriculture, you could be in finance, you could be in real estate, you could be in health, you could be in professional services, and there were people being added to your sector. No one felt threatened, everyone felt confident, people maxed out their credit card, built and bid up property values on a weekend. That is the very definition of a boom. The middle class was not under threat during the boom. Everyone felt prosperous. In the five years since the global financial crisis, May 2008 through to May 2013, the number of jobs added to the Australian continent was 840,000. That is 1.4 million to 840,000. We've slowed down. We, the job growth has dropped by about a third over the last five years compared to the preceding five years. There's been a downturn. That is not my point. The point is that since that, that those 840,000 jobs has bunched up in a couple of sectors, and those sectors where there has been extraordinary job growth over the last five years hasn't been necessarily in mining, although mining has added about 100,000 jobs. The runaway um, success has actually been in health and social assistance, professional services, education and training. At the other end of the spectrum is the real concern I think for middle Australia, there has been a diminution, an erosion in net terms of jobs uh, in the manufacturing sector of 150,000. There are 150,000 fewer jobs in manufacturing today than there were in 2008. It's not just manufacturing, it's warehousing, it's agriculture, it's retail, it's tourism. Up until the global financial crisis, you could be a 15 year old, barely literate, barely numerate, living in the western suburbs of Sydney or in the western suburbs or northern suburbs of Melbourne, and you could get a job in a factory, on a farm, in a shop, in a warehouse or as a waiter. Where does unskilled, low-skilled, barely skilled Australians from the lower end of the middle class get a job in the back half of this decade? I think there has been a skills shift over the last five years. The jobs that are expanding in health, in education, in mining, in professional services all require either university degree or technical training. The best thing the middle class can do for its kids is to give them either a university degree or technical training. I think that there is an issue with providing a narrative for the way in which life can be lived in metropolitan Australia for the lower end of the middle class. People earning perhaps 40,000 to 60,000 shop assistants, if you like, or labourers, uh, if you like, what is the narrative for life uh, for these people in, say, the western suburbs of Sydney, in the western suburbs of Melbourne? It also brings into focus um, the difficulty, I think, in getting access to affordable housing. Uh, the middle class, the story of the middle class is that uh, you can always make a go of it in Australia if you're prepared to work hard. Well, the problem is that unless you have skills in the western suburbs of Sydney, in the middle class, I don't think that pathway is open any further because all the job expansion is in the technical uh, and skilled uh, sectors of the economy. And even so, uh, there is concern about uh, access to affordable housing. Uh, in fact, the um, uh, entry level to house and land packages in Sydney, uh, I think, would start maybe in places like Kellyville, for example, 45 to 50 kilometres from the CBD, uh, at maybe 450, maybe even $470,000 uh, for about a 500 square metre block of land and a three or even four bedroom brick veneer home. Uh, the equivalent in Melbourne, say in Werribee, can be bought for $320,000. Why is there a premium of $120,000 for the lower end of the middle class to buy into uh, the housing market uh, in Sydney? I see the middle class being frustrated in terms of employment, 
in terms of the traditional pathways into prosperity, into that Australian narrative of life, of how we, um, how we live life uh, in, the, uh, in the suburbs. Um, I think that there are major issues with regard to uh, providing um, housing, to providing jobs for the middle class, that uh, for the lower end of the middle class, that we will struggle with over the next five years or so. Uh, I think there's around about 18 million people in that demographic at the moment. Um, I think that um, there has been a, um, um, uh, a negative sentiment leveraged at the middle class uh, for the last 30 years or so. Um, and especially with the rise of con the concern for middle class welfare. What I want the Australian people to understand and to remember is that 18 million people dutifully going to work, paying taxes, taking out a mortgage, raising kids, commuting to work, is actually what delivers stability and prosperity to a nation of 23 million people. I think we should be supporting the middle class and even celebrating the ordinary lives of middle Australians. Thank you very much.